Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. So glad you could join me once again. Today is episode 2379. Of course, brand new day, brand new topic. We're going over the seven signs of damaged hair and how to repair them. So really important, just to start right out of the gates, the average person has about 100,000 strands of hair on the top of their head. Over time, that hair can become damaged. It can actually break down. And we talked about some of the ways in which that happens before. We'll kind of pull that together at the end of the show as well. But before things go drastically wrong, before your hair really thins out, before it begins to really fall out, there will be signs. And if you look for the signs, you can correct it now. It's just like anything else in the body, right? I talked about the poor circulation, the cold hands and feet, the grogginess in the, bo- the morning, the caffeine to start your, like needing the caffeine to start your day, the poor sleep at night, the anxiety. All these things are signs, right? The, acceler- the higher heart rate, the um, lower, uh, or, or should say the, the higher heart rate, as I said before, but also the lower body temperature below a 98, like all of these things, they're signs. Well, the hair is no different. The hair is going to give you its own telltale signs that it is becoming damaged. And before it becomes damaged beyond repair, let's look for that, right? So I'm going to give you those seven signs, seven tips right now. Let's get started. So first one is this, maybe guessed it, maybe didn't already, dry hair. Okay. I am someone with drier hair. And that is because, let's go through it right now, Ayurveda has already told us there's three main body types, three main doshas. We've got the vata, we have the pitta, and we have the kapha. The kapha has thick, lustrous, more oily hair. The pitta has thinner hair, sometimes more on the oily side. And then we have the vata, dry, frizzy, and a little bit, um, sometimes, uh, curly, okay? So for the most part. Now, again, it does not mean you are a vata body type, if you have dry hair. doesn't mean you're a vata body type if you have curly hair, okay? It's one of the components. So when I do a dosha assessment, I go from head to toe, and the hair is only one of those assessments. Now, of course, it's your natural hair. If you straighten your hair, well, you still have curly hair. <laughs> you just straighten it, right? You just straighten it for the day. All right, so uh, here's, here's what we wanna look at. Overall dryness, it matters because it's a symptom. Now, again, vata is just gonna be more prone to dryness. Doesn't mean you can have, you're gonna have bad hair. You're just going to have to add more oil, more nutrients back into it, into your body, like oily fish, or again, even some good healthy oils for the hair. And I've got lots of podcasts on hair health as well. So add that moisture back to the hair. Be careful with over shampooing or using products in your hair that damages or strips the natural moisture, right? So use products that are natural, that you would actually see growing in nature, that don't have alcohol in them. A lot of people are using gel in their hair, things like that. Too much alcohol in those products, it's gonna dry out and damage your hair over time. Don't do that, it's gonna lead to dry and dull hair, all right? Number two is this, split ends. All right, this is an important one to look at, and this is important, and I think I'm gonna, uh, pull this together. Why don't I do? Uh, I'm going to do this with the next one. All right. So, split ends, and then the third one is breakage. I want to add these both together. Okay. So, what happens is this: your hair from the root. If you were to get a microscope and you would actually look at your scalp and you would see the follicle, just the hole, you wouldn't actually see under the skin, but you'd see the little hole, and then you'd see the hair coming out. And if you went deeper on focus on just one individual hair, you would actually see that it almost looks like a a flower or a shingle, meaning like it comes up a bit and then it, it naturally splits and moves to the next piece. And then it's kind of like it sprouts and it sprouts and it sprouts and it sprouts. So it's almost like a building block on top of a building block on top of a building block. It's like this outward, just continuing sprouting of a new flower or so. And just call it like shingles. It's like one layered on top of the other. Well, what happens is over time, if your body's weak on protein, if it's uh, too dry, if there's other issues like low thyroid in the body, what can happen is these ends actually begin to fray too much. It's almost like the end of your shoelace, right? I've used this analogy before for telomeres, for anti-aging. Well, for too long, if these things have been going on, the end of that hair will actually begin to fray too much. Naturally, it just goes that way, but it'll begin to split. That's how we get our split ends. It literally divides like branches off of a tree, right? And the breakage happens when it becomes weaker 
and weaker as it continues to grow out. So stronger would be near the root, but then it's losing its life and its strength because it's lacking in nutrients and moisture, and it's just been kind of zapped over time. It begins to break off. Now, I'm not talking about hair loss because uh, I'm not saying it comes out from the follicle. I'm saying that the hair actually just breaks, right? So if you were to grab a piece of your hair and it just breaks right off, that's a sure sign that your hair is becoming damaged or not becoming. It is damaged, right? So, so far, we have that dryness, split ends, and we have breakage. All right, really important. If you can pull a little on a hair and it doesn't break, that's a much better sign. Strong, healthy hair. The next one is frizziness, okay? My hair definitely leans towards more frizzy. So for me, I try to only use things in my hair if I use product. And I do have to use product because if I don't put any product in my hair, I don't have nice hair that just kind of like flows to the side and I can just wake up. And no, it does not work like that at all for my hair, right? My hair grows basically up and out, and then it's super frizzy and dry. That's just, that's if at its worst. Now, since I've known that now for 15, 10, 15 years, I do things, I use certain oils in my hair that make it have much more liveliness, that much healthier, those types of things. And the product that I use, I shared at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. Uh, women could use it as well, but really it's, it's just better for people um, with short hair. So if you're a woman with short hair, obviously then it would be a great product. Men with long hair, probably not the right product for you. But um, it literally only has like three ingredients. And uh, it's, it's clay, it's coconut uh, oil, and I think it's like beeswax, something like that. It's very, very simple. But it actually starts to add some more of those uh, oils back into the hair. So really simple, right? Okay. Um, so frizziness is one. Again, if you don't know what really frizziness is, it's like, um, I would even say it's like flyaways, okay? So you've got this frizziness texture to your hair. It's kind of because it's dry. The hairs aren't coming together. They're all kind of going off and doing their own thing, right? That's, that's basically my hair. And it's about 1,000 degrees in my office right now as I record this. I've I actually mentioned that one other uh, show here this week. I'm in my main office. Again, like I said, beautiful old building. I have an office inside it. Um, no heat, though, no AC. So during the winter, no problem. Just put on a space heater. But there's no air conditioner in this office. So again, today's like maybe... 110% humidity, and uh, I'm sure I have one or two flyaways and frizziness as well. But again, like that's okay. Uh, and it's funny too because my wife has um, very thick, uh, very dry, curly hair, and and uh, so it's funny because the both of us have uh, some pretty wild. Uh, dry textured hair, but she just has a whole lot more of it. So you can see all of these different things. So that's why she knows all these tips and tricks when it comes to like the skin care, the hair care, and we kind of go back and forth and, uh, and see what she's using it and talking about as well. All right. The next one I want to share with you is uh, more change in texture. So um, for some people, what you'll see is that over time, they weren't born with drier hair or coarser hair, it started to actually get either thinner or it started to go from like silky smooth. And I'm not talking about as like a child to a teenager, not that. I'm talking about like you've already went through puberty. Okay. So let's say you had silky smooth hair as like a teenager, early 20s, and then you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s or whatever it might be. And now your hair is more drier. Like it actually changed texture from when you were younger. If it changes texture from when you were in your late teens, early 20s, it's not a good sign. It's a sign that your natural hair is becoming more dry and damaged. Now, if you went from like really dry hair and really frizzy hair to now like smooth, thick, lustrous hair, all right, totally different story. But I'm saying if you're moving from healthier hair, and for you, like if my hair just kind of stays the same, well, that's my like natural, uh, what they call Prakriti genotype type hair, okay? Now, I try to make it more, not oily per se, but yeah, I've tried to add more moisture to it. If you're someone that went from great moisture to the opposite, then you can obviously see how your hair is not moving in the right direction. Now, again, this is oftentimes from, and I'm going to link you to the podcast. Uh, it is, let's see here, right here, episode 2350. All right. So we're going to try to link it up for you here today, stephencabral.com forward slash 2350. The two common practices that damage and thin out your hair. If you haven't listened to that show, listen to that show next. This is the culprit for drying, damaging the hair, and changing that texture. All right. The next one is this. This is interesting because I didn't know this, okay? I didn't know this one before. If you're more prone to knots 
or tangles in your hair, it is most likely because you are starting to move more towards the split ends or the damage in that flowering or that shingle-based effect. And that is because the hair is actually fraying now at closer to the root. So think about this. Split ends happen more towards the top. Okay. So the ends of your hair, you see more split ends, right? Okay. So now think about those split ends happening all the way down the hair. Like literally you get these little splits all the way down. The more of those you have, obviously, right, the easier it is for all of those split ends to become tangled within each other. So if you're waking up or you're just going through your day with much more knots and tangles in your hair, that's, that's one of the biggest culprits. All right, so really, really important to look at that as well. The last one is this, plain and simple. If you are losing your hair, and again, 100,000 follicles, right? Some people have 80,000, 70,000, some people have 120,000. 100,000 follicles on your hair. If they are thinning out or you are losing those hairs, they are just coming right out. I share my hair loss story at stephencabral.com forward slash hair dash loss. We'll link that up as well. And what I went through, there's always an underlying root cause why and how I was fortunately able to regrow pretty much all of it. So the problem is I, I was I was losing it, and a lot of people lose it. Now, it can be from scalp looseness, and I give all the seven reasons why, actually, um, people lose their hair, all right? So for men, it's one main reason, but for women, it's six other reasons, and men could lose it for those reasons, too. So I lost it for two reasons. It wasn't just the one main reason that men lose their hair, which is that dihydrotestosterone conversion. So the interesting thing is this, is that it's a sign, actually, that your body is, has an imbalance in some way, and that can be the hair itself directly, or could be poor, poor circulation, uh, that loose scalp, um, uh, the low thyroid. I go, I go into all the different reasons why. Now, do I believe, though, men are more genetically programmed to lose their hair by the time they get to their late 30s, early 40s? Yes, I do. Androgenic, male pattern baldness. Like, I'm not going to deny that. Yeah, 100%. Pitta, pittas, right? That dosha, that body type, much more prone. Just that's the way that it is. Good and bad, right? A lot of people don't mind losing the hair. Some people shave their head. Some people don't care. It is what it is, right? It's your choice. It's your decision. Like, and and at the same time, it's not. If you lose your hair, you lose your hair. And it's just like, hey, like you can do your best to keep it. And I think that there are ways. I gave you seven scientifically proven ways to uh, stop hair loss and regrow it as well. And we've used it thousands of times in our practice. Sometimes the genetics do overpower in terms of hair loss hair loss. But it's mainly for men and almost never for women, like literally almost never for women. Women are not programmed to have male androgenic patent hair loss. Like That's just not in the cards. Now, it can go that way because of imbalances in the body. But I share with you again, the page is free. So you can just literally go there, go to stephencabral.com forward slash hair dash loss. I've been trying to bring that to people's attention. I spent a lot of time researching this, a lot of time researching it so that hopefully, you know, you don't have to. Uh, so that's that. Uh, those are the seven main reasons uh, from the top. Dryness, split ends, breaking of the hair, frizziness, uh, change in texture over the years, knots or tangled hair, as well as then hair loss. I'm telling you right now, you can do something about it if you start to look for these signs now, and I share with you all of those different tips at that hair loss-based page. Definitely, though, check out the other podcast that I did for the two main reasons why people are damaging and thinning out their hair. That's at stephencabral.com forward slash 2350. We will link everything up so it's much easier than finding all these different things at stephencabral.com forward slash 2379. Thanks so much for tuning in today's show. I appreciate you. I truly do. Thanks so much. And of course, do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. 